Hi folks, Howard at Ragland Piano Company. After numerous requests, uh, I'm finally sitting down and against my will, making a demonstration video of our hammer drilling jig. Um, this is a jig that we've been building for about two or three years. We're kind of scaling up to make it more readily available and advertise it more. Um, when I built and designed this jig, I wasn't even aware of the existence of the Renner jig. I had had uh, numerous home-built jigs that my dad built or that uh, I had built, and none of them were quite right as far as the rotation. Uh, we, would, we would get the uh, center line of the hammer marked, and then when we adjusted for treble um, angle or base angle, uh, we would wind up having to make a lateral adjustment uh, during the drilling process to keep the drill bit passing through the center line of the hammer. And so a few years ago, I sat down and decided it was time to make a jig that we could use here in the shop, and we've even wound up selling a few of them. Uh, and what makes this uh, jig special, we've got three ways of adjusting it. The first way is, in, is a sacrificial insert, which serves another purpose. None of the jigs I had previously had anything like this, so we would constantly have to patch the drill hole with epoxy or wood rebuilder and then sand it. And of course, over time, that surface would get uneven. So I, I wanted to design in a replaceable insert that we can use uh, that's just as simple as pulling out and throwing away when you need to uh, change out in between hammer jobs. So that's where this one came in. It, it, it also allows us to set the axis of the hammer this direction. In other words, if we had a little tiny short hammer sitting here and we rotated it, we would be off. If we had a really tall hammer sitting here and rotated it, you can see where we would be well off the center of the molding. And so this controls the height. Hammers don't vary just a whole lot in, in height. I've seen anywhere between about eight and a half millimeters to the largest size I've seen is actually this one right here, which is 0.404 inches square. And I've made a little chart that's kind of handy to help me remember which um, size shims to use in between this layer right here. So a 0.404, like this upright hammer right here, it gets no shim in between here. And that will put the center line of the hammer this way, exactly in the center of rotation. Um, now, when we set this up, I use this type of a vise right here. I've heard it called a machinist vise, a three-way vise. I don't know what it's actually called, but it has adjustments that allow you to incrementally move it uh, back and forth on the X axis and also slightly on the Y axis and then lock it in place right here. So this is the type of jig I like to use because it helps me make very small adjustments uh, when I'm setting this up in the drill press. So as long as this surface here, the jaws are parallel to your table, you'll be in good shape. We designed this where when it's inserted in a vise, that is 90 degrees to the rest of the unit here. Now you'll still want to double check that and make sure that your jaws are, are proper and this is proper here and set your drill press up. Uh, but this line that we've got scribed down the middle here, that is the center line of the axis this direction. So the shim controls, the thickness of the shim here controls this axis. And then you'll use your vise or drill press, whatever your setup is, to set your drill bit up in your drill press such that it is exactly over this scribed center line right here. And then you're going to know that your drill, your drill bit is exactly over the center line of the hammer this way as well. Now, the in and out screw here, what that is really there for is to let you get as much of the molding on this insert surface as possible. There will be some base hammers that are really, really fat and there's not very much molding. Uh, and so you'd run that screw out since so you had a positive stop there and work it where you didn't quite hit the felt right here. I've got a base hammer here that, uh, you know, kind of shows what's going on there. Some upright hammers are even 
bigger than this. You don't want the felt to creep up on here because then you're not gonna get good consistent results. So that screw is used to set the stop this direction. I will actually use the um, adjustment here on the vise to change, uh, say from base to uh, tenor treble hammers where you have more tail on the base. Uh, well, it depends on if you're doing uprights or, or grands, but uh, they typically have different bore distances. Now, to get your hammer molding exactly in the center this way, now remember, we've already put the drill bit in the center right there. Now we want the hammer to be in the center. If we were to close this up right now, we can see that that hammer is a little bit off center this direction right here. Now, this is an eccentric and it doesn't take much pressure to hold it. I mean, it'll hold the hole. You can, you know, it really holds it in good. And that's so you don't have to, put, <laughs> look at it fall out. Let me snug that in there. That holds it really well so you don't have to keep your fingers up in uh, the drill press while it's going. Uh, there's uh, sandpaper on the side here to also help hold it in place. So you'll need to make adjustments here, lateral adjustments, in order to make sure that the hammer is centered up when there's tension on it. And it takes, it's a little bit of a trial and error process. I had considered See, a lot of times I'll just move it to that point right there and then tighten it up and check it. I had considered putting a uh, gauge on the side here that indicated the distance to the center line, but as we change out sandpaper or add or use thicker or thinner sandpaper, that gauge would not be accurate. So it's best just to go ahead and do this and then uh, check with your drill press and make sure visually that you're in the center of that hammer. And of course, most of us have scrap hammers laying around. I generally f send a few odd hammers along with these uh, drill jigs for test purposes and that sort of thing. So once that is set up in the center right there and you've got the correct thickness sacrificial insert and you've got your distance set here, when you rotate this, that hammer is rotating precisely on the center axis, both this direction and this direction. So this jig uh, will let you drill up to 15 inches, tre uh, inches, 15 degrees treble, 15 degrees base. Uh, personally, I'm not, I, even though some pianos go past that, I'm not real fond of it because you need, then you have to start cutting the hammer tails to get clearance, uh, especially they do that a lot of times on uprights. Uh, and then it, let rake angle, we don't see very often on grands. Sometimes we do see that but we actually have a rake angle adjustment on here uh, for upright pianos. So let's just put a upright hammer in there so we can see what this looks like right here. And this allows us, there's a little screw right here that le lets you dial this in incrementally if you wish to. It's very tight, but you'll be able to see, a lot of uprights are drilled at a four degree rake and we're bringing that up I can't really see from the camera good. Roy, is that about four degrees right there? Mm -hmm. All right, and then we're gonna tighten that back up right here. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, let's lock that in. We're gonna tighten that up here and here. And that is going to allow you to drill a four degree rake angle um, on this. It'll go up to 10. Originally I had one that went further than that, uh, but I didn't, um, didn't see much of the point. If we start getting much past 10 degrees, that's a lot of um, other concerns to work in and you can always shim your vise if you had to. But it, it'll let you go up to 10 degrees rake here. So we loosen those up there. Loosen this up here and we'll back this back down to zero. Let me take that out real quick and see that. So this is the screw right here that bears against a magnet right here and that helps it hold in place there. And then this gap will actually go to zero once uh, once we take it down to zero there. So there you go. Lock this in right here. This can be done while it's clamped up. I just did this to make it hopefully a little easier to see. So folks, this is a really rough cut video. I don't do fancy schmancy stuff. We don't do intros or anything like that. We just try to get to the facts here. So that's kind of the basics of operation there um, let me show you how we put one of these together here. Okay, so here we've got the, the, the larger base right here and a smaller top piece right here. And then we've got the uh, various size shims here. So if I was gonna drill a hammer that was um, 3 eighths of an inch tall, 
this way right here. Then what I would need to do is put a 15,000th shim in between these two pieces to make sure that our center line, this direction, was correct. So basically what I would do, I use similar colors here to what we're used to in the piano industry. You know, blue would be a 10,000th. These blues are actually nine. That's pretty close. These are 5,000th. So what I would do here, we'd put this together and I've made these holes off center so they don't affect your drilling. Because remember, we're gonna set that up based on this center line here. You're gonna drill on the center line. And I made these holes equal to a number seven bridge pin. So when you put these together, it's a fairly straightforward process. We'll put this through here. We'll put this through here. And you can actually put several together at one time. And I happen to not have any glue laid around, but y'all will get the idea without any glue, I'm pretty sure. So then I would put glue on here, glue between these layers. We'd set this down just like this. Glue on here, and it can go either way. Set this down like this, then I would clamp it up. Then once that dries, you can remove your bridge pins and you've got a shim that is the, the sacrificial insert that is shimmed to the correct height to drill a 3 8 of an inch uh, tall hammer. Now, I'm planning on probably etching this into the back of the jig itself so that um, it's just easier to keep uh, track of. You don't have to keep track of a separate piece of paper. While I'm back here, I had this idea to put a door in the back so that you could keep some of the extra parts and shims and that sort of thing. I'm not just real, real wild about this, so feel free to put a comment and say, hey, I think we should keep the doors or I think we should lose the doors. Uh, but uh, you know, the plan was to be able to keep a drill bit, some extra parts in there. And I just, I haven't found a satisfactory closing mechanism. We may try something involving a magnet to, to close that in. Um, another feature of this, and this, this is an option, you do not have to order it uh, from me with this, is an attachment that lets you use a hand drill. Now, of course, not everybody has a drill press, but you probably need to get one if you're gonna be doing sets of hammers. But let's say you were at a customer's house, you needed something simple uh, and quick, you needed to drill three or four or five, six hammers, whatnot. We've made this little attachment right here and it's got locating pins. It locates it very precisely. There's a screw to hold it in place. Now to tighten that, you actually have to take this insert out right here. Okay, and then we're gonna tighten this up right here. There it goes, there we go, there we go. Okay, we're gonna tighten that up right there. I'm gonna slip this back in right here. This is a hardened drill bit guide. It's made out of hardened steel. And that is what guides the drill bit very precise and accurately. Uh, I've got a stop collar here so that we don't go too far. If you're drilling upright hammers, of course, you don't go all the way through. Grand hammers will go all the way through. Uh, and we also include the little uh, Allen wrench that'll let you adjust that depth right there. But what this setup will let you do is uh, put hammers in. You wanna make sure it's good and flat right there, lock it in place, and you can actually use a, a hand or an electric drill uh, to drill those hammers. Uh, if you just need, had a few that you needed to do, and you can clamp it. We made the back perfectly flat, so it could be clamped to a work table and, uh, and make this very efficient right here. I need to do this like so there. So that's, uh, that was our, and of course you can still, if you need to, you can still set the rake angle and you can also dial in the, uh, the bore angle here. So I hope that kind of helps um, explain some of the basic functions of this. This is my first video explaining this. Feel free to leave some comments and I'm not ruling out doing a little bit better more in-depth video in the future, but I wanted to get this off the ground so you guys could kind of get the, uh, the basic idea of how, uh, how this jig works. Thanks a lot.